डाउनलोड तरंग ऑनलाइन रेडियो ऐप फ्रॉम गूगल प्ले स्टोर आप सुन रहे हैं तरंग डिवोशनल आध्यात्म से जुड़े
the High Court and seek relief and get security against a party to the arbitration. Now, what would you do, for instance, where you were actively watching funds being siphoned off to a third party? How do you get a restraining order? How do you get, for instance, uh, an order where you know that the, 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 there has been an illegal transfer of the asset in the time that you were issuing notices of arbitration? Uh, the High Court, the Delhi High Court in 2009, uh, took a fairly clear position on it, and we do see orders being issued against third parties. And again, the most common form of that, in fact, as practitioners in Delhi will tell you, is bank guarantees. We we don't hesitate to, to uh, seek an order against a bank that is a third party to the arbitration agreement, but you do get those orders. Um, we have started seeing. Uh, Asset disclosure orders. Now, I cannot uh, emphasize enough the value of an order such as this. An asset disclosure order can shorten your enforcement proceedings uh, by months. Um, in conjunction with a freezing order, obviously this is, uh, this is valuable. And we are seeing more and more of those. The Bombay High Court, in fact, in, um, and if I remember correctly, the data capital matter uh, directed uh, the, the, the respondent to disclose its assets and, and it made a, a, a huge difference in the ultimate outcome. Um, there are, I mean, the, the, you know, the, there are numerous orders that you can consider, but I think one of the, the, the questions that does arise at the stage at which you seek pre-award security is which forum should you approach? I would prefer just down to the High Court and filing Section 9 orders. But in a foreign seated arbitration, that is not always uh, uh, the first consideration. That, you know, let's rush to uh, a, a court in India and, and, and start seeking orders. Uh, a, a practitioner is, uh, is looking at a choice of forums. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is the challenges those, those the choice of forum could prove, uh, and again, very briefly, there are, to my mind, at least four uh, options available at the stage at which you are either initiating arbitration or, or have already initiated it. The first, uh, and we're seeing obviously this a lot more, the emergency arbitrator, uh, who is approached uh, before the tribunal is, is even constituted. The second is the foreign seated arbitral tribunal itself. Uh, the third is the foreign is a foreign court in the seat of arbitration where you seek an interim order, um, and the fourth option is the one that I mentioned first, which is you approach the Indian court where the asset is located. Now, just to go over, I just want to address the challenges each of these four could could, could pose. Um, if partial award or an order of a foreign court granting interim relief without a final determination of the issues before it or issuing directions that are not for payment of money may not be enforceable under part two of the Indian Arbitration Act. So we all know this actually. Uh, and therefore that starts to rule out the, the, the option of obtaining a disclosure order for instance, in order for disclosure of assets would easily be ruled out because it is not an order for payment of money, it is also not an order finally de determining uh, the issue between the parties. And so do you go to an, an, an uh, uh, arbitral tribunal and get this order? Uh, you could get it obviously in the hope that the respondent will comply, but is it an enforceable order in India if the respondent does not wish to comply? That's why you have to, to make a choice as, as a practitioner. The, the other um, uh, 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 option which is to go to a, a, a court um, in, in, in the foreign seat, again, if the respondent is willing to comply, that's easily done. If the respondent is not willing to comply, you have the option of uh, contempt proceedings. But the third option, which is uh, the respondent not being amenable to the person's jurisdiction of the court, not being willing to comply, um, have you wasted your and your client's time? And so we come back to, is it, is it always the best remedy to approach the court of, of jurisdiction? That's a call you will take, depending obviously on the facts and circumstances of your case, uh, you will be faced with the potential that you get an interim order of a foreign court 
which may not be enforceable in India. Again, for the same reasons that I mentioned before, if it is an, if it is a, 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 not a final determination between the parties, or it is not in order for payment of money, there is a problem with enforcing those in in India. Um, emergency arbitrator awards, and I know there is a session on it later, so I won't waste too much of your time on it. But the Delhi High Court has thrown that into doubt. Uh, an emergency arbitral award is again not a final determination of the issues between the parties. And therefore, what, what did happen was, uh, in, in, in the Raffles case, was you, uh, the parties obtained an, an order from an emergency arbitrator, but then had to file a Section 9 petition in the Delhi High Court, which kind of begs the question, why bother? Uh, maybe come to the Delhi High Court straight away or go to a local court straight away. Uh, and each of these decisions clearly need to be made very, very early on. Um, one of the challenges is, and I think this we are seeing a lot more of, which is third parties. When you're seeking orders against third parties, the, the view on it, that, on it is not quite consistent across High Courts in India. Um, the Delhi High Court has taken the view that an arbitral tribunal can lift the corporate veil, for instance, and can perhaps therefore direct a respondent uh, and third parties uh, to uh, where, for instance, you're seeing security, you're seeing siphoning of funds. Uh, with the Delhi High Court recognizing the power of an arbitral tribunal to lift, to pierce the corporate veil. I think that gives us a lot more hope. The Bombay High Court, on the other hand, is absolutely clear. Uh, in, a, in a particular case where, during the course of evidentiary hearings, it became apparent that the respondent had been happily siphoning off money to and assets to related party entities, who were, however, third parties to the arbitration agreement. Uh, and the arbitral tribunal therefore granted orders uh, of restraint. The Bombay High Court said that the arbitration, uh, the arbitral tribunal had no such power. It cannot issue orders against third parties. Now, if you, if faced with that situation again as a practitioner, you have to take a call. Are you going to go to the High Court or are you going to go uh, and, and try and lift the corporate veil and try and get orders against third parties? Well, that position remains unclear as a matter of Indian law. Even so, even yet, um, we don't have a final ruling obviously from the Supreme Court on it. And there is no clarity, I think, in the legislation. Um, Section 9 of, of the Act can be read widely, but that's a risk you take. Um, the, uh, there's one last piece that I just want to, to mention, and which we are seeing a, a little bit of when we're talking about challenges uh, uh, in, in, and seeking pre-award measures. Um, and we you know, been exploring this uh, in, in, in the context of anti-arbitration injunctions that sometimes get issued by, by courts. Now, in one particular instance, uh, we had an arbitration that was seated outside India. Uh, pleadings were complete, uh, issues were to be framed, and the respondent moved a court in India and obtained an anti-arbitration injunction restraining the arbitration proceedings. We then spent the next 18 months getting that uh, injunction order lifted. It was lifted, it was set aside, and, uh, uh, and that decision of the division bench was not overturned all the way up to the Supreme Court. But you did have a situation where an arbitration was held up for 18 months, it had resulting consequences on the business of, of the client and of the claimant. Um, we're seeing this a little bit more, for instance, in more recently the Delhi High Court in at least two cases of bilateral investment treaty arbitrations has uh, in both instances refused the injunction ultimately, but recognize the jurisdiction of the High Court to entertain uh, injunction suits. So, uh, and in both instances in, the, in, in relation to the bilateral investment treaties, it is the government of India that brought those suits. So, I, and I'm not, I, I wouldn't imagine that we've seen the last of those.
schools, uh, I would imagine that, that, that we might see more. And what do you do? What do you do with the circumstance where you're looking at a potential risk, at a respondent who could potentially bring uh, an anti-arbitration action against you in India? How do you secure both the expeditious resolution of your arbitration and how do you ultimately secure your enforcement? Because you, you have an injunction suit waiting for you, for you in India when you bring your award to enforcement. Um, one of the options we have considered with some measure of success is to preempt the anti-arbitration injunction and get your own anti-suit injunction. Uh, and, and that, I mean, this, is, and it sounds almost like some, you know, mad, over-aggressive strategy, but I can assure you that if you're able to show imminence of harm, if you're able to show that there is a real risk, that this is a litigant who could bring such an injunction or order against you and, and without merit, where the seat of arbitration is clear, um, the arbitration agreement is clear, uh, and obviously, you know, you would be required to offer security for costs, etc., and all, you know, all of those things. But it is an option worth considering for a practitioner when advising your client on uh, pre-award uh, security or pre-award measures to secure the ultimate enforcement. Um, we have tried it, it has worked in some instances and we're not always successful, but it is a practical uh, circumstance. And the last thing, and it's literally just uh, a thought, um, where not very often, but some foreign seated arbitrations will have the, a government entity as a respondent on the other side. That poses its own challenges. Uh, not all uh, orders to secure awards are available against a government entity. Um, I don't want to dwell on it too much. If somebody wants to, if one of you would like to discuss that further, happy to address it on the panel. Um, I'll leave you with, with just this, that uh, I think we are seeing a, a, a lot of innovation in the orders that are coming out of the high courts. Uh, there remain challenges, and I think some of those challenges in the absence of clarity in the legislation, uh, and those challenges are one, orders against third parties. While some high courts will give, to, give you those orders, not all of them will. There are several high courts that will decline orders against third parties, so it would be nice to have clarity in the legislation. And the other aspect on which I think the legislation could be helpfully clarified is on emergency arbitral awards. Uh, you know, where do we go? A lot of institutions are offering them, a lot of clients benefit from them, uh, litigants prefer those, uh, but we still are not able to promise that those can be enforced in India. Uh, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much for your time. Download Tarang online radio app from Google Play Store. You are listening to Tarang Devotional Online Radio.